Hey everyone, today I want to talk about the DM Hub module system, which I've been very hard at work to do. I've decided to make the module system available today a special beta release DM Hub. And that means that normal users will not get it, but if you want to sign up for the beta, I'm going to show you how to do that. And so we go down to the settings menu, and at the bottom of settings is this DM Hub version. And by uh, normally this will be default, change it to development beta. And when you do that, it will tell you that changes to the DM Hub version will occur when DM Hub is restarted. So after changing to development beta restart, you'll get a little bit of an, uh, a download process and then you'll be in the beta and you'll have uh, the latest version of DM Hub, which has uh, the module system. And so uh, I, the, the module system is still under intensive development, but I'm very excited about it. And I'm hoping that some people will be willing to help test it and see what it can do. So I'm going to start by showing you that in, in, this, in, the, in the tools menu, uh, there's two main menu options which interact with modules. One is called the download module and one is publish module when you wanna create a module. So first I'm going to click download module and show you this basic interface that will let you search for modules and will also show you show you a list of modules that are available. So far, I've only published two modules, uh, which I'll I'll show you I'll show you what they are. They are so uh, there's there's this module which is called Chunky Criticals, where often people want to want to roll crits critical hits in games where uh, they do more damage. So if you had a weapon that did 1d6 damage, uh, instead of doing 2d6 damage, you would do 6 plus 1d6. Uh, and so if you install this module, then you'll get it in your game, and, and that's how crits will work from then on in your game. And uh, so to install it in your game, it's very simple. You just click the install button, and a few moments later, it'll be installed. Uh, and then we have this other module, which is, uh, and we can see it's green there, showing it's it's been installed. Uh, then we have this equipment shop module, which gives us a bunch of objects which are useful for representing an equipment shop. And so again, I just uh, hit install, uh, and then moments later that is installed in my system. Uh, and I can show you that, that let's go over to the objects panel and we see this new equipment shop folder. In the future, I think I would like to have some kind of a little like red dot that will come up on objects to show you that, hey, there's new stuff in objects and then on equipment shop show you that this is the new thing so you can see it easily. Um, and so then we have all these objects that, that were all part of the module. Um, so, uh, and I will demonstrate that the we, we do indeed have critical hits uh, that are, are chunky, so to speak. Uh, so let's really quickly give this character a sword. Uh, and What we're going to do is we're going to attack this little goblin, and we're going to put uh, crit two, which means we only need a two or a two or more in the roll of the critical for this roll. So this is a critical hit, and we can see that this is doing plus ten damage. We can see it has the chunky critical from the, the uh, chunky critical. Uh, so we could see that that was very very easy to uh, to install modules and get going with them. Uh, so let's talk about how you how you create a module. Uh, what happens is DM Hub uh, detects everything in your game uh, that that you've added and changed, and just about anything can be part of a module. So characters, maps, if you add like terrain, uh, music, objects, just just about anything. Uh, so what what we're going to do is we're going to actually add a, a new magical spell. Uh, and uh, I'm I, I I I don't have much imagination for what to make this spell, and I don't think I'll actually uh, I I don't think I'll actually implement anything though though of course you could. Uh, so I've made this uh, Paladin's Touch spell. Uh, and so I'm going to assign it to this creature, uh, and so, uh, sorry, to this character. Uh, and so uh, what I can do is I can go publish module. And when I do, it asks me, it's asking me, I want to create a new module. If I had already created modules from this game, I could update a module uh, with a new, a new version. 
And then when I hit proceed, it shows me this, this like manifest of all the things that are in my game. So these are all the things that I've added since I created my game. So I have, I have one map, uh, I have this character. It'll show it'll show any player characters or any characters that are in a party. It will show here. They're considered important characters. Uh, any monsters are considered part of part of the map that they're on. Uh, and then we can see that I I just added one spell, so it's got the spell. Um, and well, it it tells me that I've I've uh, got some modules that I I just added to the game. Uh, and so if I wanted to make a module, say, with just the Paladin's Touch spell, I could just click Paladin's Touch, uh, and and that's all that's going to be in this module. So it's just going to be a little module with one spell. Uh, and so it will ask me, uh, you have to, when you create a module, you have to choose an author name, and this will be asked the first time you create a module. And you should choose this slightly carefully because uh, this will be stuck to your account. Um, once you've once you've chosen your author name, and this will be used for all your modules, and it'll be unique to you. And then you choose a uh, module ID, um, and uh, there's there's some rules. This has to be uh, like uh, just just basic characters, and it, it gives us a unique ID now for our module. DM Hub Dash Paladin's Touch is the name is the ID of this module. So anybody can get the module using this ID, uh, and then I can give a a nicer name here for it, uh, and then uh, I could I could write a description, uh, and then I can choose this listing status, uh, and I can make my module unlisted or public. And unlisted means basically that if you kind of want to keep it private to yourself or maybe your friends, uh, and uh, people will have to know this ID to get it. If you make it public, it'll be in that searchable interface uh, I showed you. And then we of course have some some terms where you you have to own the content that you're putting on the model system, uh, or have permission to to distribute it, of course. Um, and then uh, and then you create your module, uh, and a mo moments later your module is is created. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to show you that I I'm going to bring over this other window, which is uh, a completely different game, where I'm going to download the module. Uh, and I can uh, search for it, and we see it comes up, and then I can install it. Uh, it's been installed, uh, and then if I create a character and browse the magic library, they should have the Paladin's Touch spell. Uh, so, so we see that it's 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 that easy to uh, to distribute a module and deploy it on somebody else's machine. Uh, now some some more notes about this is uh, uh, a pretty common thing that people have asked with DM Hub is if it's possible to share your characters uh, or to move them from game to game. This makes it very easy to do that because you can uh, publish a module and we're going to this time uh, put this character in. Uh, but something, and sorry, it, it actually defaults to updating this, uh, this, this spell, uh, this spell module. So this is... Uh, assuming that I want to do an update by by default, uh, and so you can see that it actually selected this. It's it's remembered my selection from last time, and I could add anything to it, or I could just proceed. If I had changed the rule of Paladin's Touch, I could uh, just proceed and publish, and it would publish an update. But we don't want to do that. We want to publish a new module, and our new module is going to have this character in it. So you can see the spell is not selected. Uh, but what's interesting is when we select this character, you'll see that this spell is force selected. And the reason it's force selected is we can mouse over it and it, it tells us that the character requires it. And that's because the character has that spell um, in his inventory. Uh, and so he's set up with this spell. So so you have to give uh, you have to give this spell if you want to give this character. Uh, and it also actually requires this map as well because uh, this character is on this map, uh, so so it requires a map. If we if we remove the character so the character is not on uh, a map, then when we once again we'll surely create a module. Uh, now you'll see that it does not require the map. Uh, so you can see that this does um, this does. Uh, it's pretty smart about uh, detecting what you what you need to to put in your module.
Uh, so it won't let you ship a broken module that doesn't have all the contents required. Uh, what's also cool is that you can uh, you can choose to also with the module ship modules that you yourself have installed. So if you wanted to say, say you had installed 10 different spells from different people and you wanted to package them up into a single module, you could just, you could add all these modules. You could even, you could even make a module that doesn't, doesn't have any new content. It's just a packaging of different modules to make it really convenient for somebody to install an entire module pack that, that you've, uh, that you've made. Um, and like I like I said, uh, this uh, this system it it looks at all sorts of things you have in your game. So you can say uh, you can get audio, and I'm going to add some new new audio here. I have uh, some music. Um, once again, um, you, you of course have to have permission or own anything you put on here um this is this is some music that uh that we've licensed uh and are able to distribute uh so i just dragged and dropped some a bunch of uh audio files uh here and we can see that they are now they've been loaded uh and so i could make i, I actually will publish a module so uh let's create a new module uh and call it um call it battle music so we can just go see, we see we now have all these audio items. I'm just going to select all of them um, very easily. And then I'm going to uh, call it battle music. Uh, and we can. the terms and then create the module and it gets uploaded uh so you can see that uh that 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 distributing things is uh is very very easy uh it should now be uh in fact searchable in here we can see it is it's displayed in blue which means that we we actually sort of published it from this game so we can't we can't install it um because publish from uh so you can hopefully see that uh, the module system is uh, hopefully going to be very, very useful for for uh, cutting down on rework by by if if somebody implements a spell uh, that requires funky rules instead of you having to do it yourself, you can use somebody else's implementation. Of course, we do have a lot more to do that I'm planning on. Uh, we want to be able to have uh, upvotes and downvotes of modules. We want to be able to display modules more attractively with an actual image displaying the module, uh, probably put comments on modules, make sure that we have things like reporting from modules that, uh, that abuse things in so some way, uh, and so on and so forth. But uh, I think this is a good start, and I hope that you'll consider giving it a try and giving us feedback on what you think of it.